In this episode of How It's Made, I'm going to be talking about how I make my copper cylinder head gaskets for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6 and also my paper gaskets. I've been waiting for this parcel for several days. I hope it's the copper for my Z1 Super 6 gaskets. I took it out in the garden to open it just in case and removed the copper. And yes, 1.2 millimeter thick, 99% pure copper. I just washed my hands and I'm out in the garage to start making them. I'm going to make the copper gaskets in two pieces with the left hand side and the right hand side. And the cam tunnel will have the standard O-ring. The first thing I have to do is to cut the copper sheet in half. So to do this, I first measure and mark a line in the center. Then take it into my shed. In the shed, I'm going to use my bandsaw to cut the copper sheet in half. I wear ear defenders for this job because it can get very noisy. The trick is to go quite slow and not push too hard to keep a straight line. Back in the garage, I use a file to take off all the burrs from the sawing process. With all the burrs gone, I get the barrels and place them on my bench, then place the copper sheets on top with the right hand side and the left hand side. Then I use some masking tape to fix the copper sheets to the top of the barrels and hold them tight. I then carefully turn over the barrels and rest them down onto the copper sheet on my bench. Using a scriber, I scribe around the bottom of the bore onto the copper sheet to make a line to cut to later. With all six bores marked, I turn the barrels back over and remove the copper sheets. And there you can see the three cylinders marked out on each side. Then using a black pen, I mark the centers just by eye. I will be using these special sheet metal drills for drilling a hole in the center of each marked cylinder. I need to make it 12 millimeters diameter. So it starts off at six, goes up to eight, up to 10, and I stop at 12. And the beauty of these drills, they don't grab or try and twist the metal while you're drilling. That's one side drilled, now for the other. With the three holes drilled in each piece, I will then be using my Qmax cutter to enlarge the hole to 52 millimeters diameter. This is a Qmax cutter. These are designed for cutting holes in sheet metal. Normally you have a bolt through the center and you clamp one piece each side, do the bolt up and it cuts the hole. When they get this big, it can be very hard. So I decided to do it in my vise.
With the first hole cut, I proceed to do the other five. With the holes cut at 52mm using my Kumax cutter, the next job is to increase the size to 70mm using my curved internal tin snips. It's always best to trim off a little bit at a time, gradually increasing the size to the required size Otherwise you might find yourself cutting it too big and you can't put the metal back on. Well, that's the holes trimmed to 70 millimeters. It's now time to try them over the barrel and see how it looks. And they look great. I'm really pleased with that. So the next thing is to clean them up a little bit with a file, just to take off all the sharp edges from using the tin snips. After I finish filing all six bores, I use my Dremel with a sanding disc to smooth down the surface and make it all smooth and shiny. With the polishing complete, I place the two copper gaskets back on top of the cylinder block and get ready to mark out the periphery and drill all the holes where the studs are gonna go. An easy way to mark out a gasket is to use sticky back plastic. Now you can buy it in a roll really cheaply on eBay. First, cut out a piece of sticky back plastic roughly to the size that you want to use. So in this case, I just cut it in half and it was perfect, one for each side. Just checking it fits. Then peel off the backing and stick it onto the cylinder block, pressing down firmly. Next, I need to cut out the holes where the cylinder bores are. So I rub around with my finger first so I can see where they are. Then, using a sharp knife, cut out the holes. You lean the blade on the edge of the bore as you go around and you produce a nice circle. Using a soft instrument like a back of a ballpoint pen or a marker pen to press around the holes, but don't punch through, just to press down to make it visible because you're going to be cutting these out with a sharp knife shortly. Now trim out the holes using a sharp knife. Rest it against the edge of the hole and just rotate it around and it'll form a perfect circle, which will be used as a guide for drilling the holes in the copper at a later stage. With the holes cut, you can use a sharp blade to follow the edge of the cylinder barrel, removing the excess material to form a perfect template to make the new gasket. With the sticky back plastic template cut out, gently peel it off, being careful not to stretch it or tear it. 
then place it onto the copper lining up the bores. When you're happy it's lined up, press down tight. Then repeat for the other side. Back in the shed, I used my bandsaw to cut out the gasket, following closely the edge of the sticky back plastic template. When using the bandsaw, it's important to let the blade cut through the sheet. Don't try and force it through, and keep an eye on the edge when you're doing your cut to make sure you follow the right shape. It can take a while, but the end result will be worth it. With both the gaskets cut out, I go back to the garage to mark out the holes. Using a centre punch, mark the centre of each hole. Now, using my sheet metal drill, I drill the holes where the studs are going to pass through, stopping at the 12mm cutting size. With the drilling complete, I'll remove the template. Then I use a file to clean up the edges and remove all the burrs. Then, using some Abronet cloth, I go along my filed surface to remove any burrs from the edges. To finish off, I use my Dremel with a sanding disc. This produces a really nice shine and a really smooth surface. Finally, I stamp the gasket left and right so I can't get them mixed up in the future. And here's the finished gaskets resting on top of the cylinder block. And I'm really pleased with them, they look great. But the next job is to anneal them. So I go out to the utility room and run a couple of inches of water in the sink. Then, using my map gas blowtorch, I heat them up until they're glowing red hot and drop them in the water to quench. Dropping the red hot copper in water makes it go soft and malleable. With both caskets quenched, I go back in the garage and finally dry them on my cylinder block. And they look great. So that's how I make copper gaskets. Next, I'm going to show you how I make my paper gaskets. But first, I'm going to use my 35 year old Dyson to clean up all the mess and the bits of sharp swarf. To make my paper gaskets, I use this oil resistant gasket paper that you can buy online. And this roll is 0.8 of a millimetre thick, which is perfect for base gaskets. The first thing I do is unroll and cut off a length suitable for the gasket to be made. I use my Swiss army knife with a scissor attachment. I find it perfect for cutting out gaskets. Then, turn the barrel upside down so the liners are protruding. And place the gasket paper on top, pressing down firmly with my thumb and my fingers to outline the barrel liners. 
It's important that the gasket paper doesn't move at this stage or it will give a false impression. When I'm happy that I've made an imprint of the six liners, I turn it over to check and I can see six round marks. These will now be cut out using my Swiss Army knife scissors. And there we go, six holes. So now I'll check that they fit on the barrels. There'll be a nice tight fit if you cut directly to the line. Now, using my thumb and fingers, I press down hard following the periphery of the barrel so that the edge makes a sharp impression onto the gasket paper. Also pressing down tightly over the holes with my thumbs and fingers to make an indent that can be cut out later. And here is the impression to be cut. Before I cut out the gasket, I use my hole punch to punch the holes where the studs are going to pass through. With the holes punched, I just thought I'd try it onto the engine because there's a lot of studs and it slips on lovely. I'm well pleased with that. The last job to do is to cut out the shape with my Swiss Army knife. This can take quite a while, but it makes a lovely result when it's finished. With the gasket cut out, it's now time to try it onto the cylinder block. And I'm really pleased when it fits straight on, like a glove. With the head gasket and base gaskets complete, the last thing I have to do is order the seal that fits in the groove by the cam tunnel. I hope you enjoy my videos on what I get up to in my garage. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe I'll be uploading some new videos very soon.